We have a lot to get to tonight with five Americans freed in a prisoner swap with Iran, a new CBS News poll on a possible Biden-Trump rematch, and Hunter Biden filing a lawsuit against the IRS. And of course, the looming government shutdown. A group of House Republicans has struck a short-term deal to keep the government funded through the end of October. It includes temporary budget cuts of around 8 percent for most agencies, excluding the Defense Department and Veterans Affairs. My colleague, CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us now. And Scott, before we get to the funding fight on Capitol Hill, I first want to discuss today's prisoner swap between the U.S. and Iran. Let's take a listen to Secretary of State Antony Blinken, and we'll talk on the other side. Today, their freedom, the freedom of these Americans for so long unjustly imprisoned and detained in Iran, means some pretty basic things. It means that Husbands and wives, fathers and children, grandparents can hug each other again, can see each other again, can be with each other again. The administration, of course, is celebrating this hostage release. How are lawmakers reacting? Obviously, there's a universal opinion that this is a good outcome, but there's deep concern about what was done to bring this good outcome. Republican leader Mitch McConnell says this deal to bring home these prisoners could incentivize future hostage taking. And the reaction from House Republicans, Senate Republicans, House Democrats and Senate Democrats kind of falls right down traditional party lines. Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut said this was a good result brought about by the Biden administration returning these American detainees. Senator Shelley Moore Capito says it was a good result brought about the wrong way. It seems clear, Nicole, as this evening began in Washington, this is going to trigger some congressional investigations, either from the House Foreign Affairs Committee, from the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. There's enough concern about what was done to bring about this release that this seems likely, if not imminent, to trigger oversight. And turning back to domestic politics, House Republicans, as we mentioned, just unveiled this new short-term spending plan. But it seems as soon as it was unveiled, it got shot down. So what is the current state of play? I think the best indication we got, Nicole, came late today when one of the authors of this one-month continuing resolution to avert a government shutdown said, in so many words, invariably there will be a shutdown. Even the authors of this bill recognize this is likely on September 30th. That was Chip Roy of Texas. We asked the House Speaker uh, late today what he made of some of the Republicans <laughs> dissenting on this bill. Some of the conservative members of the Freedom Caucus say they're a no on this likely Republican-only bill. Take a listen to his response to that and my question about whether Democrats will be involved. This isn't the 30th. We've got a long ways to go. We've got a lot of different ideas. I, I credit our members over the weekend working together from the Freedom Caucus to the uh, uh, Main Street. They put up with an idea. Uh, I'm, I'm for a lot of different ideas. Whatever gets us to be able to get through, and I'll continue to put more ideas on the floor. Any outreach to Leader Jeffries at this point? I, I talk to Jeffries a, a lot of times about what's going on here, but inside our conference, we can work on this. And we can Bottom line remains the same as it has been this entire Congress. Republicans can lose only four votes, and there are several House Republicans who say they are firm no's. There's no Democratic votes likely to find on this bill. In fact, one interesting note from the afternoon session, Anna Polina Luna, the House Freedom Caucus member from Florida, Nicole, who just gave birth and has suffered a four-day treatment regimen for an infection and for a fever, says she'll get on a plane and fly back here to vote no if she has to. She's that adamant against her own party's plan. You know, I know you asked the speaker about his conversations with a leader, Jeffries. I know uh, congressional Democrats don't really seem too eager uh, to get on board uh, with what House Republicans are proposing. But at the end of the day, is it inevitable that the speaker is going to have to cut a deal with Democrats in order to get something passed? Going to have to cut a deal with the Senate Democratic leader, the White House, if not Democrats, in his own chamber. At some point, there has to be bipartisan work to get anything past the finish line, signed into law, to keep the lights on, keep the doors open. And as we're about to find out this week, Nicole, we'll see how much this week is defined by Kevin McCarthy's future. Calls for him to be vacated or removed from speakership. 
if he does do outreach to Democrats to get past this funding deadline. There's already been calls for a motion to vacate from Florida Republican Matt Gates. It's quite likely the calls increase if he cuts some deal with Democrats before the deadline. And on that front, uh, you know, the speaker is also facing pushback from others within his conference today. We saw Congresswoman Victoria Sparks issuing a very critical statement saying, quote, the Republican House is failing the American people again and pursuing a path of gamesmanship and circus. You know, this was actually a statement that was amplified as well by Congressman Gates. Could the speaker's gavel be in jeopardy? Even by Matt Gates' standards, Nicole, I have noticed an increase in the volume and the vitriol of his criticisms of Kevin McCarthy over the past few days, today included, indicative of potentially what he senses is a growing chorus of House Republicans who are scrutinizing Kevin McCarthy at this moment on this vote and this bill. This deadline is 12 days away, and it feels like a trigger point, a pivotal moment, an inflection point. For Kevin McCarthy, he's going to have to work with Democrats to keep the government open and just doesn't seem to be an appetite among House Freedom Caucus members for him to do so. Something's got to give. And then very briefly looking ahead to later in the week, we know Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is expected to meet with senators Thursday. Are there any plans for him to meet with lawmakers in the House? We asked Kevin McCarthy that question this afternoon. Does he expect to meet with Volodymyr Zelensky? He said yes. Whether the House Republican Conference or the entire House chamber gets to meet with Zelensky. It's a different story. There's obviously a lot of dissenting voices in the House chamber. The continuing funding for Ukraine among the House Republican Conference, whether they are given a full audience with Vladimir Zelensky remains to be seen. But Speaker McCarthy says he plans to meet with Zelensky midweek. All right, Scott McFarland, it's sure to be a busy week this week on the Hill. Uh, thanks so much. Same to you.